All right, what a beautiful day uh, to talk about flooding <laughs> and how we're going to address it. And I was just looking around at a number of the community members that are here that know more than any of us, the importance of us addressing this particular issue uh, and so many issues around that we're uh, confronting around the nation and in our city, around sea level rise, around climate change, the uh, pretty dramatic impact that some storms have had in recent years on uh, the city of New Haven as a whole, uh, but in particular, those low-lying coastal areas. And what's interesting about this area is when you look at uh, sea level rise projections, we feel so far away from the coast here but in reality, uh, this area is very low lying and is uh, at significant risk for, for uh, long term sea level rise. Um, and you've experienced it already with some of the flooding and the sewage uh, overflow that, that, uh, that you have seen. So we're grateful that um, the state of Connecticut and DEEP and Commissioner Dykes have understood this priority to help us improve our infrastructure and grateful that you've chosen New Haven to uh, <laughs> uh, announce the uh, uh, the grant because there's a lot of communities around the state of Connecticut that are benefiting from this. Um, just real quick, we're doing, and I'm looking at Giovanni uh, Zinn, the engineer, so much around climate change, uh, coastal resiliency uh, to confront a lot of the challenges that we're facing. And that's uh, over 200 million for, uh, along the uh, Long Wharf corridor there. Uh, a lot of that from the Army Corps of Engineer, uh, some from the state and other uh, sources to help build a living shoreline, to help create uh, infrastructure to ensure that a lot of the important public infrastructure, whether it's Union Station, the police station, our beloved Ikea and all the things along that corridor, don't don't scowl at me for saying Ikea too, um, but are protected, right? Because that is such an important area um, for the long-term development of our city and uh, the resilience now. And so that kind of funding has gone into uh, uh, supporting that corridor. It is along the east shore and a lot of the coastal resiliency that we're doing on, on the east shore. It is the bioswales that the city is installing everywhere to help process a lot of the storm water uh, and so much more. The Circa study in Fairhaven to identify ways that we can ensure that there's a uh, coastal resiliency and environmental resiliency there. Uh, so there's so much work that we are doing and this is just a part of that. This particular project, uh, as uh, John Cavalier will share with you directly, is when we see significant storm events, there is uh, a lot of rainwater and flooding that will actually push into the, uh, the, the sewers and push that water onto the street and into the, some of the surrounding bu buildings, which is unhealthy. It's, it's not a, uh, a good thing for anyone. And so us partnering with the WPCA to understand exactly what the problem is, because it is actually more complicated than you might think, is pretty crucial for us correcting it. And this funding will help us uh, greatly there. So grateful to so many partners that are here. Uh, uh, Representative Dillon, the advocacy that, see that you have done to secure this funding at the state level is hugely, hugely important. Thank you for uh, your partnership as well. And I know the Alders, Alder Furlow, um, Alder Furlow and Alder, Alder Marchand have also been really uh, strong advocates for addressing this issue. So thank you for uh, everything that you do. I'm gonna hand it over to Commissioner Dykes. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's really a great day to be here in New Haven. And uh, I, this is a day that we've been looking forward to for a long time um, at DEEP. We know that uh, climate change is accelerating uh, and it's impacting our communities in so many different ways. Uh, but uh, particularly for Connecticut, we have a lot of vulnerability to sea level rise. We're second only to Florida in terms of the uh, uh, percent of insured property value that's vulnerable um, to sea level rise and coastal impacts. Um, and in addition, it's an inland issue as well uh, because these intense rainstorms that we're experiencing are not normal um, and they are, our infrastructure is not designed to be able to handle the volume of stormwater um, that's coming through. And some of, the, in some of our cities, particularly, we're talking about really old infrastructure um, that was designed you know, over 100 years ago with combined sewer uh, systems. And so we have um, uh, now, what we're announcing today is $8 million, um, $8.8 .8 million that we are gonna be awarding um, to 20, in 21 grants to 17 municipalities across the state, nonprofits, local utilities, and councils of governments. Um, this is the first ever uh, award of grants from DEEP's Climate Resilience Fund. 
Um, we were able to launch this fund because of the support from our, of the legislature and Governor Lamont. Um, back uh, in 2020, we had the passage of the Take Back the Grid Act, and it included a provision in there that expanded um, Deep's ability to fund not just microgrids um, for resilience, but also all sorts of different kind of climate resilience solutions. Um, I'm really, really proud. I want to recognize um, we have here today um, Annie Decker, Rebecca French, Sarah Watson. Um, these are folks in our climate planning office who have been uh, launching this program first ever for the state. They're passionate, they're dedicated, um, and they have been hearing um, and, and we're proud to be responding to um, the concerns that we've heard from municipalities, from citizens, from business owners um, who are experiencing all of these impacts of climate change but we have not had the funding available to date to really help in the ways that we need to help. The good news is that there's tons of money out there to solve uh, for some of these climate infrastructure challenges. Um, if you were thinking that there just weren't dollars available, that is incorrect. There's a lot of money available at the federal level, even just starting with FEMA. Um, we have vast amounts, billions of dollars that the federal government has available to help with climate resilience. The problem is that we have not been funding the grant writers, the, the consultants, the technical assistance that's needed at the local community level, at the municipal level, to actually envision what projects need to be accomplished, to write the applications, to send them off to Washington so we can get our unfair share of that federal funding. I love that we're here in uh, New Haven talking about the launch of this program because of the, um, the long work, the improvements that are happening there is a perfect example of when we have uh, worked together and, and put together pro competitive proposals. We have attracted all that federal money um, to our communities to help protect them from these accelerating impacts of climate change. That's what we want to replicate all across the state is that that model but at behind the long work project we just don't have that pipeline of next projects ready to feed into the cannon uh to send down to washington that's what this 8.8 .8 million dollars is it's seed money investing in the like day-to-day -day work that has to get done to write the grant applications to send them on um, so that we can attract that money to the state I really want to note that in that legislation that authorized this program, um, we had a commitment that a minimum of 40% of the funding would go to environmental justice communities or communities with vulnerable populations. Uh, and uh, I am proud to say that of the grants being announced today, 93%, 8.2 million, um, is going to communities where vulnerable populations, including environmental justice communities, reside. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> this is more than twice the minimum target that was set um, by Governor Lamont in Executive Order 21-3 um, and is part of this program. So I really applaud. That's not just something, I mean, I'm excited about that as a deep commissioner, but um, I'm, I'm proud that we set that as an intention and a target for this program. But I'm mostly, you know, in, in uh, pointing to that stat, applauding communities who submitted these applications to us. Um, and, you know, we could not do this without your interest, your enthusiasm uh, for, for moving these projects forward. Eight of the Climate Resilience Fund grants will go to communities for various types of climate resilience planning, including neighborhood level extreme heat planning um, in environmental justice communities flood resilience planning in inland communities. You're gonna hear a lot uh, today about um, the impacts of repeated flooding. All of these plants will be located in communities or neighborhoods where vulnerable populations reside. 13 of the grants we're awarding today will advance climate resilience projects that have already been identified in planning with the end goal of preparing those federal grant applications for construction dollars. Um, the grantees will be able to, with this support, develop conceptual designs, conduct engineering studies, study feasibility and identify alternative solutions and address costs and benefits. Um, just a few I want to highlight, uh, some of the projects the grants will advance include identifying comprehensive flood reduction solutions in New Britain, West Hartford, Hartford, Stanford, Waterbury, West Haven, and Hamden, and New Haven. Um, a living shoreline project uh, we're funding in the East End neighborhood of Bridgeport. We're going to be funding studies and designs for relocating a sewer pump station and building a flood wall um, to protect a critical electrical substation in Norwich. We're going to be assessing, uh, helping COGS assess stormwater authorities 
Uh, these are really important uh, next step tools that we need to put in place at the local level to help incent uh, property owners to um, put in green infrastructure to reduce the amount, capture more rainwater on site, and also to be able to raise funds for the local match that will be required um, to unlock those federal dollars. So I'm really excited um, about that. I, uh, I know we have a number of folks who are here today to talk about um, what their, you know, their vision and how um, this, this program is gonna support them. I'm gonna welcome to the podium, um, Mayor Garrett from Hamden. Thank you for joining us today to talk a little bit about um, what you're doing in your city. Good morning. <laughs> so when I, thank you for that. Um, when I first got into office and had a conversation with our director of public works, one of the first things he said to me was, we have a pump station that is going to fail and it's only a question of when. And this pump station keeps the water levels down in Meadowbrook Co-op. And so these are a lot of people who really don't want to see their homes flood. And this funding can help us prevent that from happening. Um, so I'm really thankful to DEET for allowing us to have this funding so that we can study the party um, watershed area, um, figure out how we can increase the size of the pipes that are under our roads. They are not large enough to carry the storm water that is running through them. Um, we've had a, a springtime that has um, not caused us too many problems this year, but this is abnormal for us and next year we could see more flooding. This fall, we could see more flooding and we wanna make sure that uh, our, our neighbors, our homes are protected. Right now, um, we have people who call us after every storm and say, my, house, my basement is flooded again. And this money is going to go and protect um, the, these properties, allow us access to federal funding. And I am very grateful to DEEP for um, the opportunity to study this so that we have the opportunity to apply for some federal funding and get the help that our community needs. Thank you. I next wanna introduce Gary Zrelak from the Greater New Haven Water Pollution Control Authority. We're providing a grant to them to conduct studies on street flooding and sewer backups in the neighborhood of Westville where we are today. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the Greater New Haven Water Pollution Control Authority would like to thank everyone involved in getting this grant here. It's going to help us, you know, solve, address some impacts on a local level here where we can really see where we have some impacts that are occurring on there. You know, due to the increased frequency and, you know, and intensity of the rain events here are overwhelming the system. And as was pointed out before, it is a combined system. Some of the older systems here done here, there's been a lot of growth in the area. So we really need to look at that and how we can, you know, lessen that impact to the community here. And this grant is really gonna further us uh, on that mission there. So thank you everyone involved. It's good when the community comes together and gets this done to, for, to solve some impacts here. If it's gonna end up being multi-jurisdictional of the impacts that occur that cause that there, but we are gonna have now the ability to study that and find the right solution uh, for that. So thank you very much. Of course, uh, this funding is critical. We also were excited in this latest legislative session to see a, a small increase in the amount of bond funds we have available uh, for the broader program. Uh, so I really can't say enough about the importance of what happens in the legislature and in Hartford um, to enable us to be able to support our community leaders um, in addressing some of these climate impacts. Um, and uh, you're really fortunate um, here in this district to have such a terrific champion um, in Representative Pat Dillon, if you want to say a few words. Good morning. Um, I see a lot of old friends and some friends I haven't made yet, but I know that they're going to be friends. Uh, the, this is a sewer project in a way. I, I know that doesn't sound sexy, but, but it is. And, uh, and here in Westville, but the, on, on, that, on that particular infrastructure hangs the health and safety of the people who live here, the, the security of the investments that people have made in bringing this neighborhood back and in restoring our, our commercial co co um, economy. It is absolutely critical and very often overlooked. I really want to thank the Water Pollution Control Authority um, 
after uh, after touring the area that flooding morning, uh, the I, I did was read into a Zoom call to hear everyone talk about how we could go forward, and I saw the presentation. I'm still working on that environmental justice piece. New Haven is an environmental justice community because of the five-year look back. But unfortunately, some people didn't know that because there's a problem in the underlying law, but you don't need to hear about that. What you need to know is that this really is an extraordinary effort by a committed group of residents here and people in government, and thank you, Mayor Ellicott, and, and how do you do, <laughs> really, again, uh, and the alders, I can't say enough, Alder Marchand is still here, Richard Furlow, and I were on several calls. Uh, it's got to take a team, and uh, we can do this. This is so important. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Speaking of team, I wanted to welcome uh, Alder Marsha to say a few words. We can't possibly be successful in um, supporting communities without community leadership on making this a priority and, and uh, really appreciate your partnership. Thank you, Commissioner. You might notice that my voice is a little bit shot. Uh, my son graduated high school yesterday and I guess I, I, guess I yelled a little bit more than I'm used oh, wow. to doing. So. But don't let my haggard voice uh, cause you to think that I'm not excited because I'm very excited about this. I want to thank the commissioner uh, and of course our, our New Haven and Hamden mayors and uh, Representative Pat Dillon. And um, I would like also to recognize my colleague, uh, Richard Furlow. He's the alder for Ward 27, which is just the other side of the street. Um, I'm the alder of Ward 25. We're in Ward 25 now. Welcome to Edgewood Park, everybody. You're in a flood zone. And certain times in the past, if we were gathered in this spot, we'd be, uh, the water would be at our ankles um, because this is very close to the West River, which is a treasure, but which floods. We have problems with our combined system running through the village. And we're, we're gonna have money to study and find solutions to these problems. And it's very important that we do that because this is a very crucial part of our city. This park is a place where people come together from all over the city to recreate and enjoy nature, and to enjoy each other's company. The village just down the way, it's the, the commercial and cultural capital of Westville. This is a very important part of our city and our residents in this area really use these areas a lot. And so having the money to plan to study, to figure out solutions, to be able to apply for federal funds, to solve some of the technical problems that create this flooding, uh, it's just very exciting. And I wanna end by thanking the residents in the area. Uh, you know, John will speak in a moment, John Cavalier, but you know, this project wouldn't be uh, where it is today if it weren't for the advocacy and outspoken um, urging of our residents who day to day see the impacts of these uh, big storms. And so I want to thank everybody involved. Please excuse my haggard voice, but I'm very excited about this. Thank you. Well, um, as we wrap up our program, I, I'm going to introduce just in a moment, um, John Cavalier, who's the owner of the, uh, the Lyric Hall just down, uh, across the way there. Um, I think it's really important that we're closing with the voice of, uh, of a community leader and a business owner. Um, this is why I do what I do. This is why uh, I know our team at DEEP is so passionate about um, moving to new programs like this forward because there are climate change is now um, revealing all the gaps in our funding and our programs uh, where we do not have solutions to address the, the accelerating and pressing problems that are facing residents and business owners. Um, so the public safety um, and economic thriving depends on filling those gaps, um, that we can work together productively in the capital, that we can work with our congressional delegation to attract federal funding here and ultimately help relieve our residents and our business leaders um, from these overwhelming pressures that they're experiencing 
um, as a result of these recurring and accelerating impacts from climate change. So, so John, thank you so much for being here and wanted to ask you to say a few words. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Dykes. Uh, on behalf of my myself and my neighbors, I would like to thank uh, Commissioner Dykes and DEEP. I'd like to thank our governor, Lamont, and state rep, Pat Dillon. I'd like to thank our mayor for being very supportive, our board of alders, especially Alder Furlow and Marchand. I'd like to thank the Westville Village Renaissance Alliance and Lizzie for advocating on our behalf. And um, last but not least, uh, the Water Pollution Control Authority of Greater New Haven is uh, very professional and they are experts. Um, I made a few uh, notes that I'd like to share with you. Um, and that is um, when I, um, when I first uh, set eyes on that decrepit building, the, the then decrepit building 20 years ago, um, I had no idea what a floodplain was. All I knew is that it was a, um, it was where the working men and women of Westville came to be entertained by vaudeville shows and silent film. And uh, so uh, I was inspired. And uh, so with help from the uh, friends and neighbors uh, in the city of New Haven, the 1913 West Rock Theater was reimagined as an equitable performing arts venue. Over time, though, it became clear that my roughly 50 of my neighbors in adjacent buildings and houses were also affected by flooding. We're in the lowest topographical point of the village, and unfortunately for us, we have an obsolete combined sanitary sewer system under Whaley Avenue, West Rock Avenue, and as much as I like antiques, I don't like antique sewer systems. <laughs> and thanks to climate change, uh, it cannot possibly handle the, the capacity of water. So during uh, rain events, uh, it overflows to the tune of millions of gallons of raw sewage, uh, which is known as uh, black water. Uh, it's uh, actually awesome to watch because the manhole covers just pop off and it's like a geyser effect. It's, but it's not pretty at the same time. Um, so um, naturally this creates a public health uh, hazard on a main thoroughfare, which kind of blows my mind. And uh, you know, it's dangerous for pedestrians, uh, da dangerous uh, for, for cars. And as my neighbor Didi Strode just suggested that even just traipsing through your own very own home with this material is not, not good in this, you know, 2023 to have this problem. So, um, so what happens is it ends up in our basements and very often destroys our systems and requires costly remediation. Um, the insurance companies are held harmless. Uh, they want a uh, very high premium to insure us for this and I don't blame them. Um, in the case of the, uh, the little landmark theater here, the chronic flooding has begun to decay the sill of the wooden building which may shorten its lifespan over time, sadly, if nothing is done soon. Yet in spite of these challenges, there are opportunities. Uh, since our little arts mecca here of Westville Village is ground zero for climate change, we are on the vanguard. And with your help, we may uh, become the template for climate resiliency in our state of Connecticut. Thank you very much. John, I, I just want to say um, that so many folks that we I've talked to over the last couple of months as we've been addressing some of these issues, both here in New Haven and the north end of Hartford, um, the thing you hear is people feel alone and abandoned. And um, because our programs, insurance products and so on have not been there to help people. Um, so I think this is a great day. And as you see, everyone coming together um to ref you know i just really think you have a, such a terrific uh, community here in new haven you have terrific leadership um uh in the mayor's office and uh and and in hartford and uh, i'm proud that we're able to help support you all uh, to support this community coming together to advance these solutions um and i think as we reflect on this i think it's also really important to close 
with the importance that we have to come together as a community to do more to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we didn't make the progress that we wanted to in the in the legislative session this year on on accelerating greenhouse gas emission reductions. But um, as much as we're investing in climate resilience, uh, we will not be able to outrun uh, the pace of climate change if we don't move faster to reduce emissions. And, and that will only strengthen um, uh, uh, the affordability of our buildings um, as we make them resilient as well. So uh, with that, happy to take a few questions, but I just mostly want to say thanks to everybody for being here today. The frequency there in any of the major storms that you've seen here, and, and you always got to look at different volumes of rains. If you have, you know, a couple inches of rain over a day, it's not that impactful. It can flow through. It's the intensity issue that comes down that surcharges the system here. We've had, I think, uh, three events in the last two years. So, and if you look at that, that's the intensity of those, there's three big storms that have occurred in the last two years. Any other questions? Great, thank you everyone, have a great day.